Hi, my name is Jesse Blanchard with Goat and Yeti, and I am very excited because I am going to show you today one of the cheapest and most powerful 3D tools you can have in your arsenal. Okay, so let's take a look at this nice little fall scene I've got here. And uh, over here you can see I've got my, this is my left video channel, and then here is my right. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to get these to be oriented the same way. So let's take this uh, top right clip and we'll go select it. We'll go to effects, video filters, perspective, and flop. Okay, now let's lower the opacity on this. So we can just kind of take this down and we'll see, okay, it doesn't quite match. Now what we could do is kind of drag this over here a little bit and then maybe we take this other one and we'd kind of drag it up and we'd say like, okay, Let's look at Edward. He's looking good. All right, how far off are these flowers? Well, I'm not sure, and maybe the rotation's off. Anyways, it just ends up being a mess. And you can do it this way, but it's really difficult because, of course, in some things you want that disparity because if something's closer or further away, that's where you know these little changes will arise. So the better way to do it, what we're going to do is let's uh, leave our clip just how we've set it up, but we're going to go over here and I'll hit play and we will introduce the star of the show and that is our 3D alignment chart. So this bad boy is going to make our life much, much easier. Okay, so let's just take both of these clips and we'll put them in the center. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this tutorial using just filters that you find in Final Cut Pro. Of course you can replicate this workflow with Dashwood or with Grass Valley, their EDIUS software. There's lots of other applications that you could use, but hopefully this workflow you will be able to apply regardless of the software that you are using. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so we have our two clips over here and we have our right on top at um, half opacity. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this clip, we're gonna select it, we're going up to effects, video filters, and we're gonna go to channel and then invert. Okay, bam. Now what this does for us, which is really nice, here I can actually do this. Let's remove attributes. I'll remove that basic motion from both of these. Okay, so this is both of those clips before they've been adjusted. You can see they're really off. Now what's great about the inversion is because this is a black and white chart, the inversion allows us, if we move it over, you can really see when the clips line up. And so that was done on purpose, of course, to make lining it up much easier. So these are the steps we're gonna go through. First thing we're gonna do is we need to line up our centers. So I just kind of clicked and then dragged that top clip till it lined up over on the center. And then let's zoom in here. Okay, whoops, zoomed in too far and I'm lost. All right, let's come back over here. Okay, great. So there's our center of our chart. Now, a nice trick, at least in Final Cut Pro, is that if you have the clip selected and you're in this window here, you can hold down the Option key and then you can use your arrows to nudge stuff up and down. Now, what's nice about that is you can really kind of tell when you've gotten it you know, as close as the pixel will allow you to get. So here we have lined up our center. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we want to look at our zoom mismatch. Now a zoom mismatch where one camera is slightly more zoomed in or just positioned slightly closer than the other, this will make your image fall apart faster than just about anything. In my experience, it's one of those things that the eye just really, really does not handle well. So this is a great way to fix this and it's also almost impossible to do without a 3D chart. So if we look at this right here, what we can see is we've got our white circle is smaller than the other circle. And what's nice is because this is a perfect circle here, we can adjust this parameter really easily. So what we're gonna do, we'll double click. Unfortunately, Final Cut Pro at least does not have very good kind of drag and drop. So it's a little clunky, but we'll go over here to scale and let's just try going up. So we'll go 101. Okay, that made the problem worse. So we wanna go the other way. So let's go 99. Instantly, that's a lot better. Now we could try and go, okay, 99.1. And you know what, that looks even a little bit better there. I would say, let's just leave it at 99.1. Okay, now 
we've done a lot to this image to make it much, much better already. Next, we're going to look at the rotation. So you can see I have the white underneath over here and the white above over here. So what that means is that there's a rotational mismatch. And you can see it right around here is where that rotation doesn't quite match up. So with this one, we can take this image and just kind of, let's see, what we want to do is just rotate it a tiny bit. You can also rotate it up here. And what we want is the same line on both sides. So if we go here now to our white, we can see that white is slightly above, slightly above, all the way across. That's great. So we can zoom back into our little crosshairs here. We can select it and we can do option and we can nudge that right out of there. So now we have got a pretty well matched image. Now, of course, there's a slight mismatch here and a slight mismatch here. But one of the things that we want to keep in mind is that our chart is actually not perfectly flat. Now, what you can do, which is even nicer, is if you're in After Effects or another program, you can also use these X's right here and you can actually do a corner pin. So unfortunately, there's not really a good filter with which to do that in Final Cut Pro, but honestly, this alignment has taken us a long way. So let's take a look at our results. So what we want to do now that we have these two overlapped pretty well, we can take, uh, we'll go to our filters, we'll turn the inversion filter off. We want to leave that flop filter on. And if I just toggle these on and off, you can see how well they match. I mean, you can see just the stereo move. It's pretty cool. But let's go over to here. So let's go to our awesome scene. What we'll do is we'll turn this back, uh, this top one back on. And we are going to go, we're going to select the top one and we'll go to effects. And we'll go video filters. And we'll go to channel, channel mixer. All right, now on the top one, what we want to do is we want to take the red all the way to zero. Now we're going to take our bottom clip. And we're going to go effects last channel mixer and on the left we're going to leave the red alone and we want to take this green output we'll take that to zero and we'll go to our blue output blue blue right here we'll take that to down there and then the last thing we need to do so that these will go together is we're going to click on the top one right click and we are going to go to composite mode add so what we actually have here, and you can see it here a little bit, you can see it here, you can see it in the candle flame, we've actually got our 3D picture. So if we put on our Anaglyph 3D glasses, you will be able to see that picture in 3D, which is really, really cool. So that's basically it. That is a rough guide of using the 3D chart to conform your images. As you can see, it's a very, very powerful tool. I will be posting lots more kind of how-to 3D videos including kind of how to take this uh, next little sequence to the next step. So thanks for watching and good luck.